Peace and blessings, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. So you are in my kitchen because we are about to make dinner. We are having baked fried fish. I know that sounds weird, but I'll show you. And also a very light rendition of the traditional potato salad. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. As you can see here, I have my fish already ready to go. This is catfish. I have one egg right here that I've beaten and put on a platter. And then I have my mixture that I'm going to use to batter my fish. Now this is just some, um, actually I can show you. I forgot that I had it right here. This is some organic, unbleached, <laughs> all-purpose flour. And then I also have some almond flour. So this is the almond flour. It's more coarse and it's um, a bit of a very light yellow color. So what you would usually want to put here in the place of almond flour would be cornmeal. But I realized as soon as I was about to make this video that I was out of cornmeal. So I'm just using this as a substitute. But again, cornmeal will make this recipe turn out a whole lot better, okay? And then for our seasonings, I do have um, ground white pepper, which is right here. I have some garlic powder, which is right here. And then I have onion powder here, basil leaves, all right? Old Bay seasoning here. And then I have lemon pepper to add a kick right here. So if you cannot see this very well, there you go. All right, flour, almond flour, and all of my seasonings. When I do fish, I do this really weird thing where I always wanna add something green, <laughs> hence the basil. So you don't have to stick to the seasonings that you see here. You can definitely play around with it and put whatever you like. The main thing is just to have your flour and your cornmeal, or in my case, cornmeal substitute, okay? And then we're just gonna incorporate all of that together so we can start to use it to batter our fish. It'll be a lot easier. I'll just take this. What I really like to do is like have all of my stuff in a bag, you know, like a little Ziploc bag or a little paper bag, whatever you wanna use, and you just shake it up. That way it's a lot easier to mix everything and everything is evenly incorporated. So definitely use a bag if you have one instead of doing it the hard way like I am. <laughs> All right, and so then we're gonna go ahead and grab our fish here. I gotta pull my sleeves back a little bit. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and actually dip the fish first into our dry mixture. Got that done, pretty, pretty. And then we come over here and we roll it around in our egg. And then again into our dry mixture. want you know a really thick batter you can put it in the egg again and then put it into the dry mixture but this is good enough for me all right and it is ready to go into our pan that I have here with some oil um, I ran out of peanut oil so I'm using corn oil but I really like peanut oil so I would suggest um, peanut oil maybe even olive uh, avocado coconut oil just any type of oil here and you just lay your fish in there and it is ready to go. My oven is already preset to about 350, 375-ish, okay? It's gonna go in there and your fish is gonna cook anywhere from, I would say 20, 25-ish, maybe even 30 minutes if you have it on 350. But once you hit about the 20 minute mark, I would say go in and check it. You might wanna flip it over and then let it go for another five to 10 minutes, all depending on where it is, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this for the rest of my pieces of fish here and then I will show you all of the pieces again when they are ready to go into the oven. And now I am on the very last piece of fish. I have it in my dry mixture. And 
then into the very last bit of egg that I have. So as you can see, I have four pieces of fish here. I would say medium, medium to large um, catfish fillets here. And one egg was just like perfect for those four. So that can kind of help you gauge how many eggs you'll need, um, depending on how many pieces of fish you're using. And then now, last dip into our mixture here, or last roll around, rather, <laughs> into our dry mixture here. And this baby is ready to go. All right, there we go. And I have all this extraness on my fingers. Let me get this off. I'll be right back. <laughs> all righty, y'all. So I am back and fingers are clean. <laughs> So, of course, I'm going to wash this okay. out. But now, y'all, don't throw this away, okay? This is perfectly good to use. Again, all you have to do is grab you a little baggie, transfer this into your bag, and put it in your freezer for the next time you are going to do your fish, okay? Don't throw it out. All right, so now our fish is all ready to go, as you can see here. All right. It kind of set in that oil a little bit, so the oil um, started to soak it. So I'm just gonna pop this into the oven. Like I said, anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes at the 20 minute mark, you just wanna check on it, um, flip it over, and then again, let it go for another five to 10 minutes. And then after that, we're gonna hop right into the potato salad. Alrighty, y'all, potato salad time. So for this, I used four, yeah, I used four red potatoes. The recipe I found, I found it off Pinterest and I will link it beneath the video. They used um, yellow potatoes or Yukon potatoes. So you can definitely use yellow potatoes, white, red, whatever you wanna use. I usually tweak recipes anyway. So I used four red potatoes and I did four uh, brown eggs of about regular to medium size, okay? So I um, boiled those earlier, and then I went ahead and put them in a bowl, and I just mashed them up with my spoon here. So this is not your traditional southern potato salad, whereas that one would be more mashed and kind of like a, a chunky baby food consistency. I just wanted mine to be chunky, period. So as you can see here, I just put my eggs in there. I put my potatoes in there with the skin on, on purpose, because I believe the skin is um, very healthy and very tasty. So this is the consistency of my potato salad. If you like yours more um, smooth and mashed, then definitely feel free to grab you a hand mixer and do that. But I like mine like this. So that's what we start off with, all right? And then we go ahead and make our dressing for the salad. Again, not a traditional Southern potato salad, so I don't need nobody coming for me in the comments. <laughs> this is um, an alternative, right? It's a little bit lighter, okay, as far as the ingredients are involved. So here I have a mixture of extra virgin olive oil, some honey, some Creole mustard, I have sweet relish, and I also did, um, some pickles because that's my substitute for dill relish because I didn't have dill relish. So I just grabbed some pickles out of there, put them in really small, um, uh, kind of broke them up into really small pieces, as you can see in there. And then I incorporated those. I have my salt, um, some ground black pepper, and then also some parsley. So all of that is in here. And I also added a little bit of dill. The recipe doesn't call for dill. The recipe calls for chives. I didn't have chives, so I just put a little bit of dill, all right? So we can see what that looks like. And that chunkiness in there, again, is the relish, okay? And then also the Creole mustard. I don't know if everyone is familiar, but this is what that looks like. So it's kind of just a tad bit chunky as well. You see that? I really, really like the Creole mustard. You can use regular mustard as well in another, um, Another time I made this, I used Creole mustard and regular yellow mustard. So feel free to play around with it, right? And so you just take this, mix it all up, and we are going to drizzle it over our egg and potato mixture. I like to do just a little bit first. 
and then go ahead and incorporate that. And then you can see what it looks like, see what it tastes like. If you want more dressing on it, then put more. And that is pretty much it. <laughs> this is ready to go. So all I have to do is wait for my fish to come out of the oven. And I'm gonna enjoy it with my potato salad. So I will be back in a little while, y'all, to let you know what my dinner plate looks like. This is just about done. Yeah, I think I have enough dressing. It looks perfect. So there you go. All right, see you in a bit. All right, y'all, so here is the fish. It is all finished, but before I show you what that looks like on the inside, I did want to show you the rest of the ingredients that I had in here. Earlier, I mentioned that I put some dill, so here is the dill for anyone who is not um, familiar with it and, you know, what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can really get a good look there. But it's just um just a seasoning herb basically so i had some of that in there and then i forgot to tell y'all about this earlier this recipe the last time i made it i put green olives in it now the recipe like i said i'm gonna link it below the video so just make sure you check the description it does not call for olives i don't believe yeah it doesn't so i just decided to put the green olives in there last time and y'all it was a hit now, I ran out of green olives, however, I still had the juice, right? It's a bit red because these olives have the pimentos inside, so it kind of changes the color of the juice. So I had juice left over, and I was like, well, I don't have the olives, let me try the juice. So I did have some juice in this mixture here, and it really just sets it off. So my suggestion if you make this, of course, just use the basic ingredients and see how you like that. And then maybe test a little bit with olives or olive juice. Y'all, It is. I love it. You, you have to have um, a certain palate, I guess, to enjoy olives. So if you don't, then of course don't add them. But if you do, this really, really sets it off, right? And then I went ahead and added in some regular um, Frenchie's yellow mustard because I feel like once I tasted it, I was like, okay, it needs a little bit something else. So I just threw that mustard in there and y'all, it is just... It's on point, okay? So, you know, if you want to, dill, olive, or olive juice, and the yellow mustard, all right? So we have that out of the way. Now let's move over here to our fish, y'all. And I did flip it, I think, probably at about maybe the 15 to 20 minute mark. And I would say definitely do it at 375. Unless you really wanted to go really fast, then 400. 350 was a bit too low, so I ended up turning it up just a little bit. So 375, anywhere from, I don't know, probably 25 to 30 minutes, all right? And so as you can see, it turned out really, really nice. Look at that on both sides. And this is what it looks like in the inside. There we go. Fully cooked. Let me get some of this nice batter. Mmm, 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 mmm. Who is hot? Y'all would have food that's so good, but it's so hot. You just deal with the heat because it's so good. <laughs> That's what's going on right now. And I know I'm smacking. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay, so I would say maybe the next time, the only thing that I would likely add is a little bit more salt. I purposely didn't put salt in the mixture because I had the Old Bay seasoning in there. And Old Bay already has so much. But yeah. I think next time I would just add just a little bit of salt. But other than that, y'all, it is hitting. Mm -hmm. Let me stop smacking on this camera. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the corn oil, did, let me show y'all that real quick. This is the corn oil that I use. I know it's not like the healthiest oil or the best choice, but turns out I really like the way um, it cooked the fish. Like I said, 375 to 4, 
100 with the corn oil in there it really just it made it really really nice i like the way it looks on both sides i put my fork in here so i kind of opened it up accidentally but even when i flipped it halfway between everything stayed together so y'all this works if you give it a try just let me know if you do any type of substitutes i know a lot of people are into um the keto diet, um, veganism, vegetarianism. So if you make um, any substitutes to this whatsoever, just let me know. Let me know how it turns out. You might do something that I wanna try next time, you know? And then of course, if you are like me, <laughs> you're gonna need some condiments, some hot sauce or um, some tortoise sauce or a mixture of the two to make a roumelade sauce. But y'all, this, mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Peace, blessings, love, and light. God be with you. Bye. <laughs>